I shot the first part of this video last summer and never intended on publishing it due to poor camera angles and forgotten ingredients. But then I thought just why not try to save it with a more modern version, so here we go. Starting with 2 pounds of potatoes and some green peppers, peel the potatoes and start cutting them into relatively the same size, smaller pieces. The green pepper can then get trimmed and sliced and diced into about half a cup is all you need of that. Similarly, you'll need half a cup of sliced and diced celery. And then the real cooking begins as we open up two cans of lunch and meat, uh, slice those up and begin grating them for whatever reason. Get that all done before opening up some of those pineapples and reserving the juice. Potatoes can be put on stove top and boiled until tender. The sauce is then made with the reserved pineapple juice, adding 5 teaspoons of cornstarch, just mix it with some pineapple juice for a slurry, adding in our chopped vegetables, cooking this until it is thickened. Then in our casserole dish we can start layering the pineapple rings with our grated luncheon meat. It all fit pretty nicely into the cooking vessel and then all I had to do was pour that sauce and spread it over the top. Once the potatoes were tender, I just made regular mashed potatoes by mashing them, seasoning them with salt, pepper, garlic powder, adding in some cream, a little bit of butter, and I also added some sour cream. After being sufficiently mashed and mixed, they can get portioned out on top of the outside perimeter of the casserole, leaving little divots on top for melted butter once the casserole is complete. Finally, I took the last few pineapple slices and arranged them decoratively on the top before inserting it into the preheated oven. After about 40 minutes at 400 degrees Fahrenheit, this bad boy was ready. Ready to be plated, trying to get an element of every ingredient onto the plate. I don't think I need to assure anyone about how terrible this dish was. It was probably the worst I've had since I started this series. Mashed potatoes were alright, I guess. but. Uh, so a way of modernizing and improving it using most of the same elements would be as easy as just making sweet and sour pork. Start out with the pork butt. Now I'm just doing a recipe I found. It was one of the top videos when you search sweet and sour pork on YouTube. I'll link that right now. But the pork can be first trimmed into manageable pieces before being tenderized with the heel and the backside of a knife. Afterwards it can be cubed up into about one inch pieces, then thrown into a bowl. For the exact ingredients, I encourage anyone to watch the video linked by Taste Show, but I started with a few tablespoons of Shaoxing wine, added on some salt, and then I differ from the original recipe. I did two egg yolks due to the amount of meat I had. Then I just threw in some cornstarch and mixed that all together and stored it in the fridge until I was ready for it. Next, I took a few tomatoes, sliced them into manageable pieces, and then gave them a little dice, maybe about a quarter inch. Once those were done, I just set them aside in a bowl until I needed them. Then I similarly diced up some onion with a little bit of a finer dice. Once that was done, it can also be set aside. Next, we need to cut up a pineapple. Anyone who's never done this before, it's as easy as cutting off the stem, cutting off the bottom, and then I tried to get a good camera angle, but you kind of just need to shave off the outer side. There's some pits in it. You got to get those off the best you can. Cut it in half and you will notice the faint outline of the core. You can just cut a 45 alongside and then trim off the little triangular core. And if I explain that well enough, you can move along to cutting that lengthwise and then cutting it across those slices until you have some bite-sized pieces that can, once again, be put aside. Now we can take out our pork, individually dredging each piece in cornstarch, rolling them up into a bit of a ball and placing those balls into some 350 degree Fahrenheit oil where they can cook for two minutes, flipping them if needed, and cooking these in batches. Once each batch is done, they can be taken out and cooled on a wire rack. Once all pieces are finished, they can get put back into the oil and fried again for two minutes on each side, doing it in batches, and then cooling again on the wire rack. In a new pan with a few tablespoons of vegetable oil, I then put in the tomatoes and onions and cooked those up until they started to break down a little bit, adding in a few more tablespoons of the Shaoxing cooking wine. And then this is the part that lost my wife. I had to add in a few tablespoons of strawberry jam. She thought I was making another 1940s recipe because I was using strawberry jam, but get in three or four tablespoons of that, mixing that in, cooking that up. Also adding in about a quarter cup of honey and 
and I bought a cup of ketchup. I was a little bit scant on that, didn't have enough ketchup. After simmering those ingredients, cooking them for about 20 minutes, I then strained them into a bowl, trying to press out as much of that juice as I could because I had to return that juice back into the pan. This is the basis for our sauce now. Give it a good pour of kosher salt, a few tablespoons of white sugar, I went a little less than the recipe, and some white vinegar, about a tablespoon. Mix that together before adding in a slurry of cornstarch. Get it to your desired thickness, I like it a little more runny. And add in our chopped pineapple and our vegetables. Once those were all in, give it a little stir, give it a little bit of a cook before we add in our crispy pork. Get that all in there and sauced up. Warm it back up if it needs to be, which it likely will. Once we have everything brought together and cooked appropriately, I had some rice. I just made, you know, a regular bowl of jasmine rice, threw that in, threw on our pork, our vegetables, pineapple, and that sauce, and there we go. Sweet and sour pork. Like I said, I, I scared my wife a little bit while I was making the sauce, the strawberry jam, the catsup, the, uh, the honey. Putting that all together, once it all did come together though, it was good. Like, I mean, this was great. I don't know if I've ever had an Asian style dish like this turn out this great. It was like restaurant quality, but amplified by a thousand. I would honestly recommend this recipe to anyone. And on that high note, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe for more content.